So, as promised in the previous video, now we are going to take the story further by using the component module for Drupal and then creating web components in our JavaScript. So, let's get started. Um, so, what we are going to do is we are going to uh, go to our JavaScript file which is script.js and we will create a new custom element. Now that custom element we will use. What is the custom element? It's basically in your HTML you can say something like then my comp, right? And then let's say there is some some paragraph as a child of that. So the, the point is that my comp is a completely new uh, HTML element that you just invented. And so now its behavior will be controlled by you here. So the way you do that is you say uh, custom element start define name of the custom element be my comp and uh, the implementation will be now we will use ES 2015 here ES 6 so we will say class you could give it a name but I'm not going to give it a name I'll just say class extends HTML element and you give it the body of the class in the body you can give a constructor if you want you can give other methods too but I'm going to have constructor. First thing you do in your constructor is call the super class constructor. And uh, just for the sake of testing, we will simply print. Let's print uh, the this element. Okay, that's all I'm doing. Just printing the this element. Nothing more. Okay, so once we do this, I can come back here. Go to inspect and I'm going to hard reload. And when I do that, I do see some para one which is wrapped in my comp as you can see. But then in console, I do see this as my comp containing some para. So this, it was this simple, that simple just to create in the custom component. Now this com custom component obviously can do all kinds of fun things like it can, for example, access this, this element can access its parent. So my comp's parent is this uh, div with all the data set attached to it. That would be very helpful, right? So I can just say uh, my configuration const config is equal to, and by the way, it could even be this, right? See. Uh, you could say this dot config. This dot config is equal to take the current node, its parent element dot data set, and then spread over. Use the spread operator to convert that into a regular object. And now we can print the configuration. Config is equal to this dot config. Okay. So once I do this and reload, hard reload of course, then look, it's printing the configuration. This is coming from my custom component, okay? And as you can see, there are two uh, arrays, but both of them are JSON arrays. If I want to fix that, I can say this dot config dot conf two is equal, oh, I'll just copy, the, borrow the code from here. this dot, this dot. So now this dot conf2 and this dot conf4 are both deserialized from JSON. Once I do that, I can hard reload. And this time my configuration is has real arrays and not JSON representations of those arrays. So the, the great thing is, you could, in this constructor, you could add other information to it, 
like, for example, I could um, just append child, this dot append child, and I could add, you know, some, some kind of a, well, let's uh, create uh, a new, I say, uh, how about a block code? Yeah. So block code is equal to document dot create element block quote and then we can give it a child inner text is equal to this is my block quote right and then append child so once I do that and I do a hard reload I got so this this is the my comp adding to itself a child, a block code child. So obviously possibilities are endless. You could definitely do something. You could wrap your children with something else. So right now it has children like some para one, but it can, it can manipulate those. We were able to obtain the configuration from parent node or, or parent element in this case, this dot parent element. So that's how you can uh, obtain the configuration and obviously the behavior can change. So let's uh, try something interesting like that. Let's say if we had, uh, let's, let me just search for Chuck Norris joke API, Chuck Norris joke API. So we'll do something fun here. So there it is, icndb.com slash API. And you can just, I guess, uh, yeah, you can get a random joke. So if I do this, um, api.icndb.com joke slash random, and then you get a joke. You parse that JSON, you obtain the value attribute, and under that, the joke attribute, okay? So value and joke. So first, you need the API URL. So um, let me get the API URL, which is this, okay? I come back here, I can say, hey, uh, let's go to this and say, maybe we can give ourselves a static configuration. So you could say API underscore URL is this. You gave yourself the API URL as a configuration item. Now, if you created a new component called uh, my joke, okay, and in your script.js you have to create this custom element. So I will uh, create new custom element, custom element start define. It's my dash joke, and its uh, definition is a class that extends HTML element. Okay, and let's give it a, a constructor. So constructor will be familiar, constructor, and we call the super class constructor. And now to obtain the configuration, we say, hey, um, get the parent element. So parent is equal to this dot parent element. And then the configuration is equal to parent dot data set. Take that and use the spread operator to convert it into a regular object. That's your config. And from this config, you get your, what is it, API underscore URL, right? So we could just say URL is equal to config dot API URL. Okay. Now, we we can perform Ajax, right? But before we do that, let's add a button. So we add a button, mm, document dot create 
element button that's your button const ptn and give it a char the inner text will be fetch joke so let's stop at this just to see if all this works oh very important we have to append this so we have to say this dot append child button so only then let's reload hard reload of course and there you got a button fetch joke of course clicking it doesn't do anything because we haven't added a, a listener an event listener so let's do that so we say btn dot add event listener on the click event do something and what's that something all that's going to be we're going to do an asynchronous function because we want to do ajax operations and we want to use async await so we say uh, const response is equal to await fetch we are using the fetch api we give it the url right and uh, whatever we receive in response we parse it as json so await again response sorry json oh yeah response dot json that parses the response as json and then from that we want to obtain the joke the joke is in json dot value dot joke i think that's what it is isn't it let's be sure copy and paste it here yes it's value and then joke okay so we come back here and say value joke this is the value that we are interested in and we will we cannot return it we need to assign it to something so we will simply create another child which will contain the joke so we will say uh, let's create another block code how about that huh we'll just borrow the code from here so create element block code and we say when the and then of course we append child again first the block code okay and then we say block quotes inner text or inner html why not is equal to the value of the joke okay how's that let's see if this works uh close this let's reload and there is a block code with empty value inside we say fetch joke and there is a problem what's the problem unexpected token angle bracket Ooh. okay undefined looks like this is undefined aha uh -huh. yes 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 of course because it did not get api url to get the api url you have to go back here let's create you know what yeah api url is not going to work like that let's create that as a not a static configuration but as part of form configuration how about this the api url we give it a type of text field title uh, joke api url and then default value is this we give this as the default value all right let's see if this works okay if I flush all caches, now we have joke API URL. This is good, right? So I save block. Once I save block, and if I fetch jo joke, okay, didn't quite work. Inspect. Let's see what, what went wrong. It says, again, is it making a request? Let's check. Is it making a request? making some request is it making that request to the right place let's find out it's making a request to undefined so that's clearly not getting the correct value let's see what are we receiving as configuration object api oh look at that api url has been transformed 
its API title case or yeah so it's it's a different the name of the value is slightly different so you go to script.js and instead of saying api underscore url we have to change this to api capital u url okay once we do that and do a hard reload this time hopefully we will have some better luck yes we do whiteboards are white because chuck norris scared them that way haha <laughs> That's a funny joke. All right. So once again, let me just inspect. Let's go to network and you will see. Let me that on network. When I hit fetch joke, it issues this random joke request and it gets Chuck Norris's credit cards have no limit. Last weekend, he maxed them out. So they have no limit, but they he maxed them out nevertheless. Haha. <laughs> well, any case, so these jokes are a little lame, but hey, uh, the idea is to show you that you can create completely new custom elements like my joke or my comp. And these are custom elements, and you can put them in your index.html in a certain way. And that will let you hit, uh, will let you produce whatever you want produce this allows you to create so basically this uh, this module uh, lets you not only embed your JavaScript applications into Drupal as blocks more importantly it allows Drupal blocks to supply configuration and then you can you can access that configuration you can retrieve that configuration through this dot parent node dot data set if you're writing a um, custom element or a web component. Uh, now, in the next episode, we will switch to Svelte because creating web components is much easier in Svelte. So that's what we're going to do next. Uh, hope you learned something. See you in the next episode.